let's review uh, oil analysis for chiller systems. So what are chiller systems? Chiller systems are mechanical devices that remove heat from a liquid. They do that via a couple of different system styles. Uh, one is a vapor compression cycle, the other is absorption refrigeration cycle. Um, in both cases, the goal is, is to be able to remove heat from the fluid so that you can initiate some cooling. There's different designs out there. The most common one that's used in industrial applications is a vapor compression system, widely used in places uh, in pharmaceutical, food and beverage applications, process chemical, anywhere where cool air or cool water is needed in order to uh, initiate or maintain a process. And of course, it's also widely used on large uh, hospitals and other types of campuses where it assists in the overall uh, environmental uh, control. Um, key thing is that a lot of people think, well, there shouldn't be any uh, need to do oil analysis on a, on, a, on a chiller because everything is sealed. Um, and what you're thinking about there in most cases is the fact that it is true that the fluid that is used for continuous expansion and contraction and heat removal is generally a refrigerant. It can be something like an old Freon style system or nowadays the R12s or different types of CFC uh, style systems or nowadays you can also get ammonia uh, systems. And uh, those tend to be a full, fully encapsulated or hermetically sealed system. However, you have to have, within, within these systems, you have to have something, the pumps that are pushing this fluid from an evaporator to a condenser. Usually that's a compressor that's driven by a motor or in large situations a gas turbine. Uh, depending on how that system is will determine this level of sealant. But what's important is, is that we need to be able to look at the condition of the lubricant that's actually lubricating the driver unit, the compressor, as well as the scrolls on the condenser and evaporator systems. So what's of big concern for us is to be able to look at this and look at the quality. So the oil uh, of interest, we're looking at bearings, scrolls, the oil quality, the oil contamination, because it is integral to the overall process. What's important with chiller systems is that during the phase where we're doing heat removal, we have a situation where the oil that's been, that, is lubricate, that is lubricating these systems is totally miscible with the refrigerant. Refrigerants are chosen based on the process and their efficiencies. What's very important is, is that the oil that you choose to lubricate these systems must be miscible with that refrigerant. Not all of them are the same. So you have to carefully connect with the manufacturer of the, of the uh, chiller system or the, uh, the supplier of the refrigerant in order to make sure that that fluid is matched together. As a result of that, nowadays with the latest level of synthetic uh, refrigerants that are present, which are designed to be ozone reducing um, or reduce the effect of ozone on the layer, uh, on, on the atmosphere, uh, polyol ester type of products are used quite widely. So with that, why are we monitoring this? Well, as I said earlier, we want to look at the oil condition because since the refrigerant and the oil have to be miscible, the condition of the oil, what the right type of oil is and the condition of it does affect that miscibility. In addition to that, any contamination such as moisture getting into the system affects the cooling efficiency and the ability of the uh, chiller to be able to perform its primary function. And of course, any component breakdown such as uh, premature fatigue on bearing systems or scroll wear is going to affect the overall performance of the, of the system as well. So as a result of that, m almost every chiller manufacturer does recommend lubricant analysis to be performed on their fluids to be able to assess the health of the chiller. The tests that they care about are essentially broken down into a couple of areas moisture, acidity or basicity, evacuated viscosity at 40 degrees C, elemental metals 
and then any large wear debris catch, such as ferrous density or wear debris analysis, is an option. When we recommend running uh, an oil analysis test for these systems, if you have a Freon or an R22 or HC134 chlorinated based uh, refrigerants, we recommend that you run a water analysis, total acid number to look at the acidity, viscosity. When we say ev evacuated viscosity, you want to make sure you remove that refrigerant before you run the viscosity. If you use a mini vis system with the Hellishaw cell, you do not have to remove that. You can just introduce the sample directly and it outgasses as it's running the sample. Elemental spectroscopy for the wear metals, ferrous density for any sign of large debris or large wear, and wear debris analysis as an option. For ammonia based systems, everything's the exact same, except in a set of acidity, we're worried about basicity. High amounts of water present in a chiller can affect the uh, evaporative capabilities. It can clog the check valve. It can cause some fr freeze issues. So you want to uh, worry about that. Acidity can affect the miscibility. Uh, the viscosity, if the viscosity is not within norms, it might indicate that the, oil, that the separator is not working properly and that may need, need, need to be checked. Elemental spectroscopy obviously tells you about wear metals as well as any additives that may be present and ferrous density for any large wear. So what are your options for on-site analysis for chillers? Uh, what type of solution should you consider? Well, since we're concerned in predominantly with the condition of the fluid and contamination, um, a, a basic mini lab system, um, which includes the uh, fluid scan, plus the viscosity uh, viscometer is, is critical for a basic start so that could be a mini lab uh, 23 uh, 23 you can if you need to worry about ferrous density you can also have a 33 and of course as you expand to a mini lab 153 you get the elemental spectroscopy there that's suitable for very for large sites where you have um, high amounts of uh, chiller uh, applications